A lot to get you caught up on this morning on the deadly developments of the pandemic. But first, a man shot in the stomach during a carjacking in the Greens Point area. Deputies say the victim was parked in an empty lot off Greens Road around midnight when he got into a fight with another man who later shot and carjacked him. They're still looking for the stolen black four door Cadillac. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. A suspect chase leaves a deputy shot this morning. This happened off Betty Boob Street in northeast Houston. Houston police were called in to help precinct six deputies. The suspect took off on foot and was later found with police dogs. He was hiding in a shack but did eventually surrender. No word yet on how that chase started. Also developing, the 19-year-old daughter of boxer Floyd Mayweather is expected to face a Harris County judge tomorrow morning. Ayana Mayweather was arrested on Friday. She's accused of stabbing a woman in the arm at a home in Cyprus. The victim was taken to the hospital, but she should recover. Mayweather is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. She was released on a $30,000 bond. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. There are now more than 1.2 million confirmed cases across the globe with more than 64,000 deaths, but 246,000 people have been able to recover worldwide. In the U.S., there are more than 312,000 known cases with 8,000 deaths. 2,600 of those are in New York City alone. They recorded 105 deaths. Nearly 15,000 people have recovered across the U.S. Today is Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week for many Christians, of course, but worship services have been suspended because of the outbreak. But there are still some ways you can celebrate safely. Our Nick Notario joins us from the Assumption Catholic Church in North Houston, where you can still get those palms. Good morning, Nick. Hey, good morning to you, Stephen. The Palm Sunday event will take place here at Assumption Catholic Church. And if you want to get some palms, here's what you need to know. You're going to pull into the parking lot here, and it's going to be like a drive through service. When you drive in with your vehicle, they want you to stay inside. That's where a member of the church will walk over to your window and hand you blessed palms. It's a piece of normalcy as Christians start Holy Week. The coronavirus pandemic has forced churches to make changes. The closures couldn't have come at a worse time for Christians. Today marks the start of the religion's Holy Week. Today is known as Palm Sunday, a day in which parishioners celebrate Jesus' return to Jerusalem just days before he was crucified. The pandemic isn't only impacting churches in the Houston area. At the Vatican, the Pope took part in a Palm Sunday Mass in a near-empty St. Peter's Basilica across the globe. Other churches are offering virtual masses this week. The same can be found here with the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. The Co-Cathedral Sacred Heart is offering a Palm Sunday Mass at 1045 this morning. Now here in the north side, Assumption Catholic Church is offering a virtual service as well. But if you want to get those palms, you can come between 10 and noon. The church is located just off I-45 on Little York Road. In North Houston, Nick Latario, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Nick, thanks. And focusing in on the numbers here in our area in southeast Texas, there are more than 2,200 known cases and 35 deaths linked to COVID-19. Galveston County just reported its first coronavirus related death. 87 year old Peggy Smith, who was battling dementia and was a resident at the resort at Texas City. Her son says he didn't even know his mom tested positive until those cases were announced on Friday. My mom was she was incoherent. And she was she couldn't move. She could she couldn't move her neck. She couldn't move her hands or arms. I was like, Mom, wink at me if you know I'm here. And I, and I think she winked. More than 80 residents of that facility and employees tested positive for the coronavirus. Well, a concerning warning from the White House. President Trump is preparing the nation for a very difficult week ahead as New York State and other hotspots prepare for the apex of the outbreak and the CDC is making recommendations for people when to go outside, what to do once they're there. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell with more. President Trump with an ominous warning Saturday. This will be probably the toughest week, and there'll be a lot of death, unfortunately. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo warning the apex of the coronavirus cases is likely a week away, and he says his state, the epicenter of the outbreak in the U.S., is still not ready. But help came in the form of ventilators from Oregon. Uh, their curve comes after ours. Uh, frankly, I know New Yorkers and I know New Yorkers' generosity, and we will return it double fold. In response to New York's continuing surge in COVID-19 cases, the president is sending 1,000 medical military personnel to New York City as backup. 
They're going into a battle that uh, they've never really trained for. Nobody's trained for this. Nobody's seen this. Other hot spots, Detroit and Louisiana, are also seeing a dramatic increase. By the predictions that are in that healthdata.org, um, they're predicting in those three hot spots, all of them hitting together in the next six to seven days. Officials with the CDC now urging Americans to wear a face covering when they leave home and continue hand washing and social distancing. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sent a letter to colleagues Saturday outlining her goals for the next emergency relief bill called CARES II. She says the new legislation must go further with helping families and businesses, as well as state and local governments, hospitals and first responders. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, tomorrow, HISD plans to resume its food distribution at five schools on Monday. Of course, there's a lot of need out there right now. Here's a look at the five locations. Wesley Elementary, Revere Middle School, and Madison, Milby, and Northside High Schools. The program was temporarily stopped after some potential exposure at one of those sites. Safety concerns also were present because of the long lines of people trying to get food. Well, every day next week, those sites will change. We have a list on our ABC 13 News app and our website. And starting tomorrow, food distribution sites in the city of Houston will also be back open for families in need. The Houston Parks and Recreation Department will be handing out curbside meals for kids ages 1 to 18. That is from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Children have to be present to get their meals. Both a snack and lunch will be provided. We have a complete list of the 50 pickup locations also over at ABC13.com. While much of Houston is shut down, volunteers are working overtime at the Houston Food Bank trying to help feed a staggering number of people. Amid the COVID-19 crisis, the Food Bank says it's helping double the number of families it normally does. The biggest thing that we're frankly running into now because we have to limit the number of volunteers is money to keep operating, not just us, but the partners that we're working with. The vast majority are doing drive-through models or they're doing social distancing grab-and-go models in order to try and keep the, the distributions as safe as possible. Well, there is an easy way that you can help out. ABC 13 has teamed up with the Food Bank to help raise funds during this critical time. Just text ABC 13 to 41444, that number there on your screen, and you can select how much you would like to give. Every dollar, by the way, that you donate can provide three meals to the food bank. Well, you know, it's time to check in with Alita Loresca. Hey, Alita. Hey, good morning, Stephen. A little bit of fog this morning, nothing too widespread. Otherwise, a drier Sunday ahead. I know after the last couple of days, uh, kind of need that break from the rain. We get, will get some peaks of sunshine, not until later on this afternoon. Otherwise, less than a 20% chance you'll encounter a sprinkle or two. This afternoon, temperatures warm into the mid 70s. Lots of clouds in place uh, out toward the hill country. Temperatures there in the upper 60s to low 70s. And then we're going to see temperatures start to warm up as those winds begin to shift out of the south and east. A look at future track shows Monday morning starts off dry, but as we get into the afternoon, we're going to see those showers start to develop down along our coastal communities. A few of these rain showers could blossom in an isolated rumble of thunder, especially on the southwest side of town and then drifting northward in our northwest counties. Tuesday's not looking too wet, although we see a little bit of color on the map east of I-45, a better chance of seeing a few showers. A warm front will be lifting out of our area, so by Wednesday we will be drier, but we're also going to be hotter. I think by Wednesday those rain chances diminish, but then we see those temperatures peak in the low 90s, challenging a record set back in 1986. A very active weather pattern to close out the week, Stephen. Another cold front that's going to mean some cooler temperatures as we get into Friday. Lots of variety in there. Thanks, Alita. Well, we know most of you are staying off the roads and probably staying indoors. But if you do have to get out this weekend, there are some construction closures you're going to want to watch out for. Traffic anchor Catherine Whaley has us covered. Traffic is light, but there's still weekend construction. On the West Loop, three southbound lanes between I-10 and Westheimer are shut down, as well as the I-10 ramps to the West Loop going south. The closures last all weekend. Because of the lighter traffic, TxDOT now plans to work around the clock on the Westheimer resurfacing project. Two lanes are blocked off each way between the 610 West Loop and Fountain View. For more information on traffic, just head to ABC13.com or our news app.